Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is the wonderful outdoors. And today I am going to target or fish on a body of water that I haven't fished since I was about 17 years of age, probably. Long time ago. I used to fish here a little bit during the ice fishing season, but not a lot. Like I said, I haven't fished here for a long, long time. So we're gonna try to go figure something out obviously to find some areas to target for ice fishing, as well as just try to put some walleyes in a boat with a lake that I really have no experience on. Cranking is definitely going to be the go-to to start with, especially with it being glass calm like this. We're gonna cover a bunch of water, and then as we find some areas, maybe we'll do some sharpshooting or something like that, but cranking right now, deep cranks, as well as lead core. Let's go get her done. Obviously a plug is important, but another thing that's important are your straps. Make sure you take these things off because that wouldn't have been fun. I have some questions sometimes about how I launch a boat by myself. I'm going to give a quick demonstration here. I've never used this launch, so there's a bunch of different methods I use. We're gonna try my first method to start with where I get nice and close to the dock, jump in the boat, drive off, spot lock, that type of thing. I have a rope in there too that I can also put on if I need it, but we're gonna try my first method first if the launch allows me to i like to get nice and close to the dock like nice and close and this launch actually looks really amazing for this like actually perfect the pads are right up to the to the dock this will be a very very easy launch very easy I'm gonna put my boat into the water where it basically just starts to float. Here, go a little bit more. Okay, it is just fell off of the, the clip area. So it's now floating, it's already floating off. Quick little step into the boat like that, nothing to it. Swing the motor down, oh, down. Start it. All I'll do is I'll just back away from the dock. This was a super simple, and obviously when it's windy, there's different ways to do it. There's no one way to do this by yourself. You have to be diverse, a bunch of different methods. I'll pull myself to the dock here, nice and steady. Ooh, I like how shallow it is. I definitely use the right side of the launch, I'd say. It's a very, very nice launch for this, very nice. I'll jump off, kick my boat away. I was a little bit aggressive, but like I said, kick my boat away a little bit here. I should put my Troy motor down a little bit further too. When I was in there, it was fine, but uh, down a little bit more would have been smart. Now my boat's away here. I'll just spot lock it. Now, of course, tying up here, there's nothing wrong with that too. Leave my remote here. I'll drive my truck out, park it, and then bring my boat back to me. Simple. Bring my boat to me that I didn't put my trolling in, trolley motor in far enough. <laughs> you can run pretty shallow water like that though. Kill it. Let it drift in here a little bit. Grab it. And then just give it a little start. Kick yourself away. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Like I said, there's many different ways I do it. That is one way I do it. And it's probably my favorite way. This was a very, very good dock to do it on. Well, I did a bunch of driving around and after being on the lake, I was like, oof, I wanna find some water that's not green, but that is not the case. Everything I found is puke green everywhere. So I have to start trolling in puke green water. That is tough, but I did find some fish here. I did a bunch of driving up and down the shoreline. I mapped out an area. Now I will basically troll, or I should say crank from like 20 to 30 feet, probably in there with deep divers to start with. Fingers crossed we can slam a big mama. It's going to be a warm one. So, Everybody knows that I like deep diving bandits and uh, Kells Custom Bait sent me some custom painted ones here. This one's called a Transcona Clownfish. 
painted in Dauphin, Manitoba. Thank you, Kel. Deep Diving Bandit. I love bandits. They've been cut. They've become my one of my favorite baits for trolling for walleye, the shallows and the deeps. There's so many good trolling crankbaits out there for sure, but this one, oof. It's like a little zombie. I like it. I think that's going to be really good. We're going to try this bait to start with and uh, yeah, go from there. Cranking is such a good way to locate fish, I feel like. Maybe if I drive around here enough, I'll create some waves and get rid of this green water. When it's flat calm and there's LJ problems on a lake, it's never good. Oh, that's a fish. That's a fish. I don't think it's very big. But that's definitely a fish. Okay, well we got one. Didn't take that long. Small though, definitely small. Hope you survive that green mess. I don't even want to deal with this stuff in the boat. Wow. So before I started to do any fishing, I spent like an hour or two driving around. Look at this, it must all be bait. That's insane. So I spent like an hour or two mapping all this whole area out on this side first. You can't go wrong with mapping out an area before you fish it, especially if you're gonna troll it, because then you can kind of stay within the, the right areas the whole time, right? I know I can keep going between, I end up going between like 40 and 40 and 15 feet because there's such a big drop off, but my bait's only running about 25 feet. So if I do catch them out in 40 feet, they're suspended at a good, a good depth type of thing, which suspended fish sometimes, right? And I've shown in the past is obviously a thing, so. Anyways, spend some time with your mapping unit if you have one first. I use the Hummingbird, the Auto Chart Live. In my opinion, they make the best maps so far with, than any other unit. I believe they are, they were the first one that came out with something like that as well, but oh, going a little bit too quick. I'm going between about two miles to 2.4 mile an hour as, as well, covering a bunch of water. And if I find an area that's really good where I get a bunch of strikes, I can go over that area again and again type of thing. Oh. That's a fish, that's a fish for sure. Little guy again. <laughs> okay, well, one small walleye and one small pikefish. Northern pike, I call these northern jack pikes. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. A little bit better than the other ones for sure. Not saying it's big, but it's definitely better than the other ones I just caught. Oh yeah. This one's got some weight. Hopefully a walleye and not a little snot rocket. Since we are targeting walleye today. I like to catch pike when I'm pike fishing. I like to catch walleye when I'm walleye fishing. It's a walleye, I saw the white tip tail. Not a bad one. Not a bad one at all. Oh, you'd be a good eater, wouldn't you? You'd be a good little eater, my friend. Okay, a nice 20 incher right there. A little bit bigger than I like to keep to eat. We'll throw him back. I don't know if I'm keeping any fish yet today or not though either. Probably not with the water being this green. Well, the bait works. Thank you, Cal's Custom Baits. I love my deep diving bandits, that's for sure. You don't have to get a custom colored crank, but it's cool. And if you don't want to get the custom ones, you can get them off of the LureNet website, which I have a discount code for, Clayton15. And then that's only if you're in the States though, unfortunately, and if you're in Canada, Pokey's Tackle Shop carries them in Canada. They'll ship Canadian wide. Okay, we're gonna run to an area here that I haven't mapped yet and it's going to be a little bit harder to stay i know there's obviously going to be a drop off here right right i'm on 22 feet and i came in here from the deeper and mapped out this area first so we're going to try to stay every time i hit 22 feet i'll swing a bit to the right and as soon as i hit 31 feet i'll swing to the left back and forth like that zigzags another or like little s's is another good way to like map out an area while you're trolling there is nothing wrong with trolling to map out an area but it just gets it done when you're dry, or it gets it done quicker when you're driving around without trying to fish. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, what do we got here? What do we got here? I love having that clicker on. You can be daydreaming and be like, oh, I got a bite.
Doesn't feel very big. It's trolling 230 feet of line. I'm using an eight foot six Savage Gear Squad Walleye trolling rod. I've got a Dakota 300 line counter reel. I feel like the line counter reels are so important when it comes to trolling. And on that reel, there's 30 pound braid suffix G core. And then I have on a 14 pound fluorocarbon leader and it is 30 feet in length. Love it. Nothing like catching fish on a water, a body of water you haven't been on for a long, long time. It's small though. See, if Carter was with me, this would be a Carter sized walleye. See you, little buddy. It's nice with this hot sun having something protecting my neck. These, I've worn these like all summer. I only have like three of them and I rotate them all the time. This is the Striker um, Guardian, I believe it is. Super comfy and keeps you a little bit cooler on the hot, hot days. I'm a huge believer, a huge, yeah, believer, is that a word? I believe highly in long sleeves to protect yourself from the sun. Like I have the worst hand to hand right there, right? I try to protect my skin as much as I can. The sun's a, a deadly, deadly weapon. But these are, these are comfy. Striker, Striker Brands, Guardian. I don't think they're called a hoodie, but the Guardian shirts, Guardians. If I'm wrong, I'll put a, the name here. Like, I'll feel like a donkey, but I'm pretty sure it's Guardian. Oh, that's a fish. Yep, yep, that's a fish. Nice, it's been a while since we've had a fish. That's the way she goes when you're cranking, covering water. Gonna have good moments and you're gonna have slow moments. It's not bad, it's not bad. Be another good slot fish. She just hooked right in the right in the corner of the mouth there. What a nah. What a nice 18 incher probably. He'd be good table fare. Okay. See you, buddy. Well, a little midday update or quarter day update, I guess I could say. I haven't caught a fish for an hour and a half now. I um, just keep trolling along here, covering water. Got a mental note of kind of where I had that most action to possibly go check out that later in the day. Not that I want to write off where I haven't caught fish because I have marked a lot of fish, but I do think it's a lot of carp, possibly some baits and cis like Cisco's, that type of thing as well. But I don't want to write those areas off, but I do know that there's probably a better chance of catching more fish where I, I started and I was catching a bunch of fish because yeah, I think it's been like an hour and a half or something like that without a, without a tick, without a little bite. And I have reeled up to make sure I haven't had weeds and that type of stuff once in a while. And yeah, so don't know if it's time of day, don't know if it's, don't know if it's a spot, but the only way you can really uh, kind of eliminate all that is just to do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Oh, oh, oh no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Came back, good, 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 good fish, I think. Maybe, had my drag pretty loose. Oh, it's been a while since I've had a, had a bite. That thing hammered it twice. I think it missed it the first time, unless it pushed the bait ahead the first time too, which is possible. Doesn't feel giant, but it doesn't feel small either. I don't know, that thing hammered it. It acted more like a pike the way that it hit it once, and it was gone, and then it came back, but. Let's hope for a nice size walleye and not a northern pike. I'm gonna be at my floral leader here right away. There's my floral leader. I've got 30 feet. Floral leader, it's staying down all right. Uh, yeah, it's a, just a nice walleye. Uh, not a monster. Man, did he hammer that thing though. Holy. Awesome. Maybe another good like 20 inch or something like that. 21. Got that bait sideways. 20 and a half, not big, not small, but nothing wrong with uh, that. We're just trying to figure out this lake right now. Oh, that's a fish, right? Just small. Yeah, that's a fish, but a small one. Little guy. Oh, fish, 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 fish. Yeah, there we go. Maybe a little bit better one too, I think. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah. There we go. Definitely feels better. Got some green water here again. Oh, doesn't look bad. What do we got? Doesn't look bad at all. Just kind of skiing them in here right now. Ooh, biggest of the day for sure. Biggest of the day. Look how green that water is. Should I net them? No, nah, we'll just grab you, right? If you come off, you come off. That's okay. Well, not too bad. About another 20 incher. <laughs> He's mad. Sticking with the same bait so far. It's catching fish. Obviously, if I had two people right now and I could try a couple different baits, I'd learn a lot more quicker. Oh, I probably got the worst sun angle of that all of a sudden. Good thing to kind of key on if you're at a lake for the first time is that first drop off you can find from the shoreline. Now the lake I'm at, is basically just a big bowl. It's a reservoir lake. So it kind of just slowly goes from zero to like 20 feet. And that's got kind of a sharp, sharp, sharper drop off from 20 to 32. And then it goes out into a deeper bowl. So that's kind of why I've been focusing on that that 20 to 30 foot area too, just cause that's the steepest drop off in this lake. And I just been going in a big circle around this whole lake to start with. I think for the first couple times here, I think that's a pretty good strategy, right? Just circle around, mark waypoints where you catch fish and uh, areas that are notable. And then you can go back and sharpshoot those areas and fish a more finesse. But covering water, I think at a, a new body of water, you can never go wrong with something like that at all, especially if it's working, if you're catching some fish. If I wasn't catching any fish at all, okay, I'd readjust, but like, okay, I'm marking fish, I gotta figure something out, right? But right now, it's just it's just good to drive in a circle. Hey, Clayton, go catch walleye on a populated lake that's pressured. Well, here I am. <laughs> this lake sees a lot of pressure throughout the year. Very, very busy place, as you can tell. Almost every background of mine has had cabins in it so far. Oh, 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 oh. I was not paying attention and I just got a fish. Wasn't paying attention to my rod. And it doesn't feel bad at all. Okay, little buddy, see ya. Oh, I was on my phone and just got throttled. Oh boy, okay. What do we have here? This one feels better 20 after 4 sun is starting to finally come down a little bit nice cool part of the day or getting to be the cool part of the day which is my favorite the question is is this fish hooked funny we're catching fish anyway that's a good thing about a 19 inch i'd say well the sun is setting on this fine fine day this fine fall day starting to feel like fall in the evenings and the mornings. It doesn't feel like fall during the day, but I think that'll wrap this video up. Nothing too exciting. I didn't, I didn't light them up, but I wasn't really planning to. That's the ups and downs of going to a new lake to trying to figure it out, right? Like a lot of times I'll, I don't show this, this stuff on the video of going to the lake for the, the first couple times. A lot of times I'll go figure it out and then I'll go film a video. But, Sometimes it's good to mix it up a little bit. So thank you so much for watching and don't forget, get outside.